Talisa uh, Velasquez, a student at Hunter College, started in CUNY BA in fall 2019, entering with a 3.93 GPA and proposing two concentrations, one in performance and the other in Latin American art. This makes a lot of sense given that Talisa was raised in Oaxaca, Mexico, where she went to museums and art galleries and became interested in dancing, singing, and acting. Her passion is on creating communal art that invites everyone to have a voice in a constant dialogue for love and justice. She has been part of theater productions that touch on themes of immigration and otherness. She has interned and worked with organizations that use theater for storytelling and education. She hopes to join the Peace Corps after graduating and then pursuing a master's in art education or applied theater. Her presentation is about a Ch Chilean performance artist, poet, and filmmaker, Cecilia Vicuña. It is a pleasure to welcome Talisa Velasquez. Hello. My name is Salisa Velasquez, and today I'm going to be speaking about my research on the artist Cecilia Vicuña and my woven consciousness and connection to her work. Cecilia Vicuña is a poet, artist, filmmaker, and activist born in Chile. Working since the 60s, Vicuña creates site specific installations in nature, streets, and museums. She calls her work transformative acts that bridge the gap between art and life. Next slide, please. In my research, I have gathered four major themes in Vicuña's work. Participatory practice, compilation, dissecting meanings of words, and exploring and pushing the boundaries of art forms. The reason I've discovered and obsessed with Vicuña's work is because I'm currently taking a class called Research Methods of Art History. I was assigned one of her least researched works that was recently included in the MoMA's expansion called Que es para usted la poesía? Next slide. It's a 22 minute compilation of photography and video created in Bogota, Colombia in 1980. In this video, she interviews children, artists, police, intellectuals, prostitutes on the street, asking the simple question, what is poetry to you? Each response is equally magical, but I'll quickly share two responses. A prostitute says, anything can cause inspiration. Sex is poetry. An artist says, poetry is a revolutionary dance. It's what kids or crazy people do. I presented in my research that not only does this video show Vicuña's participatory practice and interest in compilation, but she really focuses on dissecting the meaning of poetry. Poetry's definition can perhaps mean something written or that rhymes, but, but Vicuña really shows that everyone has their own specific definition of poetry. As soon as I saw this video, I couldn't stop thinking, what would I have responded to her? What would people in 2020 respond? What would people in New York City respond? I was so curious that I was ready to go hit the streets and ask people the same question. But since the quarantine happened, I haven't had the honor of doing that. Mm -hmm. The only person who I've been spending so much time with is myself. So I've used Vicuña's template I've, I've used Vicuña's question as a template for exploring myself. What brings me joy? What causes me inspiration? Next slide, please. I have discovered that poetry is a living, breathing thing that every day presents a new meaning to me. I want to continue her legacy, her discovery, her curiosity. So I've created a small compilation of investigative silly moments throughout my day, responding to Vicuña's question, ¿Qué es para usted la poesía? What is poetry? But fearless, curious, lost, small, quiet, hidden moments of the human experience.
Is it a dance? A full body dance of pure ecstasy, of pure discovery of love. poesía no es más de lo que dicen por ahí, lo que hacen los locos y los niños, lo más natural del ser humano. This video is not as important as the lesson that Vaikuni has taught me. She's taught me to listen, to listen to the poetry around the world, around my world. I now invite you all, next slide please, sorry. I now invite you all to ask yourself the same question, what is poetry to you? See if you can create for yourself a new definition of poetry. If you want to make me really happy and want to participate, uh, you can email me here. Uh, any submission would be really exciting for me. Thank you. Wonderful presentation, Talisa. Very, very interesting. Inviting people to sit with themselves and see what new meaning they discover from the same old rose, right? So we have a bunch of questions coming in. So first, why do you think uh, Latina poets are so comfortable with a cross-disciplinary approach to the arts? And this person is also thinking about Carmen Boyosa and visual artist Magali Lara, who have also collaborated on joint works for decades in Mexico. And why do you, how do you think this relates to you as well? Um, I don't personally know the work that was that you just mentioned, but um, I would say that they're not afraid to just have a constant question of the reality of the reality. And I think sometimes that question can manifest through many forms. Uh, and I think, I don't know specifically to poets in Latin America, but I think what I've learned is that people tend to listen to their surroundings more. Um, and that listening helps you kind of grasp what you want to learn from the world. And I think that can manifest through multiple mediums of art. Very well said. The next question is, uh, the visual and the oral qualities of your video are compelling and beautiful. Can you talk about how your art history studies intersect with your creative practice a little bit more, please? Yeah, I think that um, not only do I consider myself an artist, but I am also like an, a, a highly curious person. And I think that that studying art history really allows me to, to understand what I'm looking at comes from. And I think, for example, if you go to the MoMA or any museum and you look at a work of art and I wonder, how did this artist create this and why and what were what were, what were, what was happening during the time that they were creating these things so i think that art history allows me to use my curiosity to understand the work that i'm looking at and then also while i'm learning their history it allows me to kind of take pieces of it and incorporate it to my own work that's beautiful uh I also have my questions as well that I wanted to ask all of our presenters, but let me ask uh, the last one. Um, so could you talk about why you chose this Chilean artist in particular? Yeah, um, well, so in my class, um, Research Methods of Art History, we were all assigned an artist in mm -hmm. class to do research on, and I, we, we had certain artists that we can choose from, but I, as soon as I saw that her 
um, her name was on the list. I sent the email quickly because I've seen her work before and I think we're very similar. And I think I was really excited to learn from her a lot. I think this process has been a learning process for me to not be afraid. I think Vaikunya represents someone who's not afraid to challenge the norm, who's not afraid to just go out and create, who's not afraid to go up to people on the street and ask them questions. And I, I want to be that person. And I was really excited that she was on the list and I've been kind of obsessing about her work. <laughs> Sounds like a very healthy kind of obsession. <laughs> Thank you so much.